ladies and gentlemen good morning good afternoon and good evening we have people logging in from all across the globe thank you so much for joining this session hosted by bero my name is shakti prasad i am the head of content at bero and i run the procurement espresso magazine i welcome you all to the 6th edition of espresso live event and online thought leadership forum featuring procurement leaders and practitioners uh at this juncture i would like to take a minute uh, to thank all my colleagues at bero as well as our partners for continuing to deliver high quality output for our clients uh, even during this uh, challenging times a few bero employees in india have been personally affected uh, by this uh, raging pandemic our prayers are with them i hope uh, we get over this uh, situation soon anyway uh, let's get back to the event here uh, before i get started with this session we have a few housekeeping rules to be kept in mind next slide please housekeeping yeah all the participants will be on listen only mode uh, for the entire duration of the webinar uh we will take up the questions at the end of the presentation but we would encourage our attendees uh, to key in their questions any time uh, during the session please type them into the question box uh, given in your control panel uh there could be a lag of a few seconds in between the transition of slides uh, so please bear with us if you have any difficulty in joining the webinar uh, please try to log back in or key in your queries in the q and a box uh, and we will try to help you now i am happy to introduce uh, welcome krishnan uh, the vice president of research at bero uh, i hope you all can see him on your screens a uh, whale is a veteran in the procurement intelligence space with over 15 years of experience and over all these years he has worked on nearly 10000 projects assessing market intel projects uh, across industries uh, domains and categories uh, recently he's been showcasing bero's uh, new procurement intel platform uh, named bero live.ai to hundreds of our clients and prospects and now he's also uh, in charge of um, bero's supplier risk and compliance program uh, thank you so much uh, for joining the session today vel Oh no thanks uh, Shakti and thanks everyone I hope everybody is doing safe and well our prayers are with all of you and well wishes too and thanks for the opportunity Shakti looking forward to the next uh, 55 minutes Sure thank you well uh, next slide please Yeah so today we are going to showcase uh, Bero's risk and compliance platform uh, we calling it the know your supplier platform Uh, it's basically the idea is uh, it's a unified system wherein uh, procurement teams and vendor management teams can uh, look for risk uh, information as well as compliance and supplier certificates all in one screen so that's the idea uh, we have rolled it out to a few clients already and now we are presenting this to you uh, the audience a uh, well i see uh, a number of data partners are listed out there i believe about seven are on the platform on and three are not on the platform uh can you throw some light on it yeah absolutely shakti and uh, thanks for the context and for the flattering introduction um like i said it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be interacting with our audience uh, today so let me let me begin with a little bit of a level setting as to what we do in terms of risk and compliance in terms of monitoring watch listing and year round checking of the status of the suppliers for all of our users and all of our clients the goal here is to have an integrated aggregated 360 degree view of your supply chain in terms of strengthening in terms of having any bcp plans so that it's as resilient as it's possible right and uh, as a path towards building supply chain resilience we partnered with some of the best in breed in each one of these areas which are very important to track in terms of supply chain resilience risk and compliance so on and so forth like you said yes some of them are available on platform for example dun and brad street for financial risk credit safe as an addendum to dun and brad street for financial risk refinitiv or what used to be thomson reuters for 
uh, politically exposed persons, right? And you've got rapid ratings for a super deep dive of financial risk, right? And you've got ECOWADIS for uh, sustainability medals and inherent risk ratings. You've got Dow Jones for adverse media mentions, sanctions, alerts, so on and so forth. You've got supplier.io to do a quick flash enrichment of understanding who are the suppliers who are diverse in terms of ownership. Achilles for labor, health and safety, Office for cyber risk and security. So when you look at all of these partnerships, some of them are available on platform, right? Some of them are available offline. So some of the ones where we actually do an offline rating and I'll explain why we do offline ratings, um, those would be rapid ratings, Refinitive and Echoadis. The reasons are quite simple, Shakti. So when you look at what rapid ratings can do for you, you're going into the fourth level of rigor in terms of opening up company filings, so on and so forth. So it's more amenable to an offline relationship. Uh, Refinitive, in terms of politically exposed persons, the data is passed on to you so that you can actually integrate it into any of your internal system. And the way we work with Echoadis is only through enterprise relationships. So it's a very interesting model. I call it the BYOD or the BYOL model, which is the bring your own data or bring your own license model where, where users can bring the enterprise relationship which they have as an existing agreement with Echoadis. And in terms of ease of use and aggregating all of the risk and compliance uh, ratings, uh, features, alerts, they could use the, the Vero platform or the Vero digital platform to view this okay. data. So yeah, so that's how we work with each one of these data partners. Uh, cool, uh, thanks, Well, I think uh, it's time for us to showcase the platform. Can you please uh, open the uh, module, please? Yeah, absolutely, Shakti. Just give me like five seconds and if you can just yeah. let me know once you can see my screen, we should be able to start off in pronto. Yeah. Yeah, it's visible. I hope, uh, dear audience, I hope you all can see this platform on your screens. Uh, I'll give a couple of seconds just for time lag, uh, Vail, so that sure. everyone could catch up. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I'm ready. You are. Yeah, okay. So here we have the Know Your Supplier platform built by us. Uh, well, so let's assume that I am the procurement manager or I'm in charge of uh, vendor management. Uh, how to start off? Where do I start? Uh, is there a roadmap? And what's the first step that I should be taking? Absolutely, absolutely, Shakti. So the first step is quite simple. So we've got a integrated workflow on top of which we have a managed service or a concierge desk, if you might uh, call it that, where all you need to do is just pass on your vendor masters to us, right? It's It's as simple as that, right? Uh, easier said than done. Vendor masters need a lot of scrubbing. Uh, data needs to be normalized in terms of um, our client's data or users' data being able to talk to our third-party partners, to our platform, vice versa, so on and so forth. So there's a managed service which actually Vero provides where we actually take care of uh, data scrubbing, data enrichment, and put it in a format in which both the systems talk with each other, right? So you could just pass on, or clients or users could just pass on vendor masters to us, right? Or they could actually do it by themselves. So we've got a self-help uh, feature, Shakti, where okay. people can go in and just upload their supplier list. All they need to do is just click on upload supplier list. It also has a sample sheet, which tells you the format in which the data can be uploaded, okay. or the help document, which actually assist them in actually uploading the data in the right format. They could just drag and drop it, or they could just skip it, give Vero a call and say, I'm gonna send out the flat file to you in a CSV format. We'll take care of the entire process uh, by having the data in a way in which it talks to the third party partners and we can actually upload it ourselves, right? So the multiple ways in which you can do it. Uh, we've got certain features in the AI platform where users can come in and look for the data one supplier at a time too. So it's completely based on the convenience of the users. Um, you could do everything from self-serve to managed services. And a point to note over there, uh, Shakti, is that the managed service or the concierge desk, which involves a lot of a lot of enrichment and a lot of cleansing work, comes at no extra cost. So that's okay. that's something which is built in. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, so do you want to explain how this works? Say maybe you could pick a supplier. 
and explain how the ratings work for that particular supplier? Sure, absolutely. I'll pick three suppliers for you, Shakti. Absolutely love talking to you at any point of time. So the way the uh, so let me let me do a quick run through of what people can see on their home screens. So this is what they uh, what they would call as a dashboard or a cockpit, which at any point of time tells them what's happening with the suppliers, where are the red flags, where are things safe, where are things not safe, and super important point, Shakti. What are the early warning signals in terms of predictions where there could be a weakness in the value chain? So the dashboard shows that, and it's quite okay. simple to interpret. It's very clickable. It's very user friendly. So you know how many suppliers uh, still need to be rated, how many suppliers data is already available, and how many are not basically uh, showing up any responses, right? So you can actually view that as part of the dashboard, and you could actually get into specifics post that. And what I mean by specifics is uh, let's say arbitrarily somebody is looking at 20,000 supplies, and I'm just using that as a uh, as an example, right? So somebody is evaluating about 20,000 suppliers, so they get to see how many of those are in high risk, 2,000 of those, 3,000 of those in medium risk, so on and so forth. Similarly, adverse media checks, right? So we are talking about ethics and sanctions, right? So you know about 4,000 of them have an ethical flag against them. 5,000 of them have an environmental flag against them. So it shows you the distribution of your supply base across each one of these risks, be it financial, ethics, and sanctions. Similarly, companies which are on sanction, right? So these are companies which are, uh, for example, hotlisted from operating in a particular geography. It could be a sanction imposed by the government, right? It could be a violation of treaties, so on and so forth. So that data shows up too. And very interestingly, Shakti, you might have multiple types of risk, right? Uh, cyber security, sustainability, mm -hmm. labor, health and safety, PEP or politically exposed persons. You got financial risk, but it's important to understand what the holistic risk for that particular supplier is, right? So we also build what we call as a supplier overall rating, where we basically okay. say this supplier, if I take all my 10 different ratings together, what's the blended balanced scorecard for that particular supplier? So that, mm -hmm. that shows up also. And similarly, any specifics about any of the data partners, right? For example, your Echovardis medals and your Echovardis inherent rating, so on and so forth. The dashboard is super customizable, Shakti. So users can pick and choose what they want to see on the dashboard, right? So they can okay. say, I only want to see DNB ratings, so on and so forth. So that's how I would actually look at it. And that's the entire dashboard. So uh, let me know whenever you're ready, Shakti. I'll pick probably two or three suppliers and get into specifics on each one of them. Yeah, so uh, we can do now, Ved. I'm ready. Okay, okay, wonderful, Shakti. And, and do do stop me at any point of time when you have any questions, which you think is representative of what's what's uh, important and what's uh, you know interesting. Um, so let me just pick this particular supplier. So I pick a supplier, and the first set of data points which show up on the risk and compliance platform is what I call as a DCP or a detailed company profile. This includes everything from the hierarchy of the company, right? And hierarchies are obvious. Uh, obviously important for reasons that you pick, you pick the right financial entity to go through the ratings, to opening up all of the uh, risk parameters, so on and so forth, right? So people can choose between a single location or a headquarter or a branch or a subsidiary. So the platform automatically tells you what to focus on and you know what not to. So you get that feature automatically uh, built in and shown on the platform. Another piece of input which actually comes in is the company profile. So all your information about dance numbers, which category, physical address, leadership team, right? All your information about which category they service, all of that automatically gets pulled out, right? So that's your detailed company profile. The interesting piece kicks in when you actually go into the supplier risk information, right? So the first thing which gets opened up, uh, Shakti, is what is the DNB SER rating or what you call as the supplier evaluation risk rating, right? Uh, and, and obviously it comes in from DNB. It's refreshed continuously. Every time um, there's a quarterly result which gets published, the data gets autom automatically refreshed. So it happens multiple times a year. Users don't have to do anything, right? And it also gives you a lowdown on what that particular risk mean. It, it's, got a, it's got a full write-up on what ACR means, what does it mean on the ground, what's the formula, what are the different inputs which actually go into calculation of ACR. And in simple words, is your supplier under financial duress or are they safe or are they somewhere in the midway zone, right? So that's an input which comes in. And it's very critical, Shakti, not to work with just one financial data partner. 
because everybody's got their own methodologies, everybody's got different early warning signals. So we also have other partners. Credit Safe is just an example. We've got things beyond DNB and Credit Safe too. So we also surface the Credit Safe rating wherever required and wherever requested, depending upon the engagement. And then you have a rating which basically moves all the way from A through E. And then there's a score which is accorded based on uh, the uh, the uh, bucketing under, for example, each one of the grades. So you get to see both of these ratings and this is the start. So this is what I call as the base minimum, which is the financial risk analysis. Okay, uh, just a quick question there. If someone wants to say, download the entire supplier uh, list, uh, you know, along with the ratings, uh, say in a CSV format, because you spoke about the upload, would they be able to download, uh, you know, with the output? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so one of the most important pieces of the digital platform, Shakti, is data privacy, data confidentiality. So we put systems in place where we are very careful uh, in terms of the download option. And you could just go back to the home page, and in the home page, in the dashboard, we have an export feature, which is protected, okay. like I said, uh, based on who the user is, and every user has a unique identity. And all they need to do is just choose that and they can actually export all of the data for their own suppliers, which they've unlocked ratings for. So the answer is yes, you could do it on the dashboard by hitting the export button, download it as a CSV file, yes. Okay, uh, before we move on, uh, just a message to the audience. Uh, the audience, uh, if you have any questions uh, based on whatever you have seen so far, we're gonna keep showing you more features uh, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. But if you have any concept related question or any feature related question that you've seen so far, please feel free to go ahead and post that question in the Q&A box. We'll be more than happy to answer them. And in case we are unable to answer those questions uh, during the session today, uh, we will certainly try and email you the answer. Okay, uh, well, okay, let's, let's move on. I think we have cyber risk uh, on screen. Yeah, please proceed. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Shakti, for the context. So, Shakti, uh, in terms of cyber risk, one of the things which we do is we partner with this organization called Office, British organization. Uh, they, they, they pretty much are endorsed by some of the leading financial authorities, uh, especially banking institutions in the UK and world over. And what we actually do is we open up what we call as a threat score and as a vulnerability score, and you could actually deep dive into how this well works. And all users need to do is just scroll over the information button and it gives you a full on methodology on how the scores are basically calculated and how it's interpreted, right? So the, the principle is that low score means you're doing good, you're in the green, high score means you're in the red. So that's, that's a simplistic way of looking at it. But what Orpheus does is they actually build out a very complex way of actually checking out what the cyber risk of suppliers are, right? So like I mentioned, it's got a threat component, it's got a vulnerability component, and each one of those have multiple subcomponents which look into deep dark web mentions, any intent of intelligence attacks, any malwares, any open ports, uh, usage of any tools, platforms which are outdated, which actually makes uh, susceptibility or vulnerability to risk very high. So there's a host of dozens and dozens of parameters which Orpheus does a check on, and then the scores are basically generated uh, based on that. So those scores are again connected into uh, our platforms, and then it opens up based on who you want to see the score for. So that's that's how the Orpheus uh, relationship works. I want to take this opportunity to probably switch into a different supplier because okay. I think we've been, we've been showing the same supplier multiple times. So sure. let me just pick supplier by going back to the dashboard so um, just 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 to showcase some of the other features uh, a, a, a very interesting piece of output which is monitored 24 7 shakti is basically what i call as adverse media mentions right so adverse media mentions is basically all kinds of ethics and sanctions alerts against your supplier right and this can vary on anything from production issues supply chain issues workplace issues, harassment of the workplace, regulation, corruption, so on and so forth. And anytime any of uh, our user suppliers throws up a flag on, for example, the Dow Jones AME, it immediately shows up over here under different buckets. For example, this particular supplier has a product and service issue, and then you can click on the name of the uh, uh, title or the issue, and um, you can actually open up the exact news source, the credible data, 
which actually defines what the allegation against that particular supplier is, right? Uh, the way to interpret this data point, Shakti, is you need to look at it as if there is a mention of my supplier in an ethics list or a sanctions list for that matter, what do I do with it, right? It's, it's very critical as to what's the call to action, right? And one of the things which we support uh, is uh, how do you look at an alternate supplier strategy? How do I shortlist alternate suppliers immediately? Mm -hmm. How do I change my sourcing strategy if I'm constantly seeing issues with the supplier, right? So we take care of that and that, that those inputs are actually pushed out as very proactive alerts to our clients. And just like how I showed you uh, ethics, uh, I yeah. want to showcase an example of a sanction too, Shakti. So okay. one of the ways in which you can actually check for sanctions is going back to the dashboard, right? And the dashboard is super easy to understand where the issues are, right? So what I'm showing is a few thousand suppliers who uh, who I've added, and then you can see all of the ratings all in one go, where you can actually see where the reds are, where the greens are, and where the oranges are, right? And it's very critical that you find out what the early warning predictors are. And we have a central tool which actually pushes out these alerts, right? And the alerts are basically pushed out where it basically says, hey, your supplier has actually slipped from uh, uh, the green zone to the orange zone. They've slipped from the orange zone to the red zone. So all your early warning proactive uh, alerts are pushed out automatically by the platform. Users, uh, users can set up their own thresholds, so on and so forth. And if you want to see sanctions, like I was talking about, just go in there and it will show you the sanctions. If your supplier has any sanctions, then I wish nobody works with a supplier who might have a sanction. And we cover all kinds of sanctions, like I mentioned. This example is more of a Office of Foreign Assets Control, which is more of a US-based sanction. But users can view the report. They can see more information, so on and so forth. So this gets pulled in automatically. OK, uh, we are 20 minutes into the session. Uh, we have 20 more minutes uh, Vail. Uh, so we'll reserve the last 20 minutes uh, for audience Q&A. Uh, we're, we're already receiving a few questions. So quickly, Vail, I think we have a couple more to showcase, right? The data partners. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Thanks for reminding uh, those, uh, Shakti. I think um, the, the goal of Vero actually playing in this particular space where we look proactively for early warning signals, uh, do risk and compliance, is to cover pretty much all of your uh, risk areas. And this also includes areas on multi-tier supply chain mapping, supplier diversity, so on and so forth. But in the interest of time, I'll showcase a couple of them, like you uh, said, Shakti. I'll talk about Echovardis and I'll talk about Achilles. I'll probably sure. start with Achilles and then I'll move to Echovardis. For Echovardis, uh, I think I think you all have to uh, share the screen because uh, we have an enterprise relationship uh, through their customers and it's not a completely on-platform relationship. So let me just show you Achilles and how that works. So Achilles basically plays in the space of labor, health and safety. It becomes very, very, very critical in today's world where you're looking at modern slavery and uh, how do you ensure that none of your suppliers, suppliers, suppliers are even remotely connected to any of those issues. And this also includes your standard labor health violation codes, 18,001, so on and so forth. And how do you make sure that your supplier is safe? So we've got two levels of uh, integration with Achilles. One is a self-assessment where suppliers get to fill out a very stringent set of questions where they basically have to give an answer saying, uh, no, I did not partake in any of these. And so, so it's more of a self-declaration form. Uh, but then you might have certain suppliers who are super critical where you want more than a self-declaration. And that's where Achilles works directly with, for example, suppliers to do what they call as a silver assessment, right? And anytime you have a Achilles assessment, it basically means you've met all the criteria, the super stringent criteria, which absolves any, any wrongdoing on the labor, health and safety space. And you, you're really, really running an efficient organization in terms of employee well-being. Uh, employee safety, uh, so on and so forth, including your contractors and the subcontractors, right? So that's the Achilles piece. So if you can actually pull up the Echovardis uh, part, I can actually explain that. And I think that will be one of the last pieces of the data partnership piece right okay. now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for pulling that up. And I hope everybody can actually see uh, your, your screens. And uh, this is a sample of an Echovardis medal, right? So the way Echovardis works is very interesting. 
um, users bring their enterprise relationships to Vero with Equavadis, and then we've got the ability to open up the ratings and showcase it, provided there is an enterprise relationship. And you've got three types of sustainability medals, right? So you've got the platinum, the gold, and the silver. The platinum is when you suppliers are at the 99th percentile, which means only 1% of companies are doing better than them. Similarly, you've got a 5%, which is the 95th percentile, and then you've got the 25%, which is the 75th percentile, and anybody below that would be called just, uh, let's let's call it rated, which means they really don't make the cut to silver, gold, and platinum, or you could be rejected because you don't satisfy even the base standards. So you can get any of these medals from uh, Equavadis, and we open something very interesting called a inherent risk rating, right? And inherent risk rating is basically a number which tells you based on the industry the supplier represents and the country in which they operate, we're talking manufacturing locations, sourcing locations, so on and so forth, what is the inherent risk of working with a supplier like that, right? So that's a quick fix way of looking at whether the supply needs to be gone, uh, needs to be made to go through one of the badges or the medals, right? So so that's that's another output from Equadis. Okay. Um... Thank, thank you so much, Will, uh, for your explanation. Uh, just a, a quick question here. Uh, why did we choose these set of data partners? You know, what is the value proposition? And let's say someone signs up by having, uh, say, by tapping into the data and, and certificates from these set of data partners, uh, would it be that they have really covered most bases when it comes to risk management? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So while I answer that question, uh, if 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 uh, you can hand over the controls back to me, I might show you a few sure. examples. But let me let me get started, uh, Shakti. Uh, so the point is quite simple in in my mind. You need to work with the best data partners in terms of content, right? You need to make sure that you work with data partners who have the most level of coverage. I'm just I'm just going to share my screen. Just bear with me for literally five seconds. Yeah. Are you back to be able to see my screen now, Shakti? Yeah, it's visible, yes, it's visible. Okay, I'll just put it on full screen and continue talking. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so the point is, how do you work with data partners who are best in breed, right? And what I mean by best in breed is you've got millions of suppliers who you've already unlocked ratings for, right? You have granular data on suppliers, self-assessment, badges, medals, third level of rigor, fourth level of rigor. And we assessed hundreds of data partners and we found out that some of the ones which we work with are fantastic in each one of those areas. I'll just give you a couple of examples. Uh, DNB got 140 million suppliers. Credit Safe, they cover 87% of private companies out there in the world. And I, I can almost see your eyes lighting up when I say private companies, but yeah. Uh, so we basically chosen the right partners who have the most number of supplier relationships and also in-depth data on each one of these risk and compliance parameters. Uh, okay. Um, so do, do you advise clients as to say, what rating to be applied for which supplier segment? Because there are so many out there. And first of all, how many number of suppliers do you typically recommend? And once the number is out of a way, uh, do you apply any formula or algorithm to say, hey, you know, for 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 these sort of suppliers, uh, use uh, say this this rating, this data partner? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the answer is yes, uh, Shakti. We absolutely do that. And the way we do it is basically what we call is the three C model. Which are the categories? What's the criticality of the categories? Which are the countries in which each one of these suppliers are based out of, right? I call it the 3C model. And of course, there's a spend component. So based on uh, all of these parameters, we, we let users know that here's the right mix of uh, suppliers which need to go through each one of the, uh, let's say, risk and compliance checks or watch list, right? So you don't need to do everything for everybody. So think of it as a pyramid. And then you've got suppliers who are your preferred suppliers. And then you've got suppliers who are very strategic. You've got suppliers who are very transactional. Then you've got suppliers who are very critical where um, your business means nothing to them, but then your spend is so small, but that's super critical to run operations. And then of course, you've got the proverbial tail spend analysis, which is the bottom bottom part of the 20% uh, of, of spend or 80% of your suppliers. My overall point is not everybody needs to go through, for example, a sustainability rating, right? But everybody okay. needs to have a basic financial health check. 
So the right mix depends upon what percentage of companies fall under which bucket. And like I said, country, criticality, and then category, and look through the lens of spend of each one of these categories. We provide consulting services, which actually helps clients understand which suppliers need to go through which mix of risk and compliance parameters, how often do you do it, so on and so forth. So that's that's an activity which we support all of our clients with. Okay, uh, it just occurred to me now, uh, please don't get me wrong. Uh, it, I mean, when I look at these uh, ratings and data uh, and the pipes that gets fed into our system, they, they all look historical, right? So when we say uh, a risk management tool, uh, one of the things that people viscerally understand is uh, something, a predictive risk modeling kind of a tool. And there are a few in the market. So is there a way to find out uh, you know, if a supplier, say, will get into a financial distress, for example, say six months down the line. I mean, we, we witnessed this last year when there was this uh, massive COVID crisis. Uh, so my, my point is, yeah, I mean, all this is great. Uh, beyond this, do we have uh, anything, uh, say, from a signaling point of view, do we have any kind of signaling to say, okay, supplier XYZ may get into trouble, say, six or eight months down the line? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so risk is all about predicting what what the weak nodes are or where they are, and also understanding what the early warning signals are so that I can actually react. Because uh, this is like insurance; that there is no point in being dead. You you got to understand that you know something's going to happen, and how do I mitigate that particular risk before it actually occurs? So, absolutely, Shakti. So, as part of our AI engine and AI algorithm, one of the things which we track is all kinds of disruptions and when i say all kinds uh it's a finite number we got about uh 45 different risks which we track this includes cyber attacks port shutdowns uh winter storms pandemics so on and so forth any any unfortunate uh man-made or natural disaster this includes production issues uh supply chain issues so on and so forth and what we do is we constantly track it for the supplier sourcing locations and we actually give a predictive input which basically says hey this particular category which you're buying from this particular supplier in this particular location there is a raw material risk there is a covid risk there is a risk of a production or supply chain issue there is a risk of a port shutdown there is a weather related risk which is coming up and not only do we do that we also let users know what is the potential reduction in supply which might be taken out of the market and based on who you represent as an industry, how much are you gonna be hit, right? So that entire sequence of events is built out in our bio outputs, which is called the World Instant Risk Exposure. And this is constantly monitored 24 seven across all categories, so on and so forth. And what we show is, is, is an output, which your team is showing on, on, on our user screens right now, where it gives a complete portfolio on um, how, the, how much of the suppliers are, are in high risk, so on and so forth. And what also comes out as an output is, is the supplier going to face cash flow or liquidity issues six months from today, nine months from today? It comes down to that. If your supplier cannot run the business, your business is going to take a hit. That's a huge risk. So it gives you a predictive uh, piece of output, which tells you in a finite amount of time from today, it could be three, six, nine, 12 months from today, there is going to be a cash flow problem your supplier is going to face that's going to affect your security of supply that's going to affect your relationship with business that's going to affect your production capabilities so that entire value chain is built out using math supply demand price category specific numbers so it is a category and a commodity risk output and not just a supplier risk output so that's okay. something which is for all of the suppliers and any ballpark data points that go into so this kind of a model? Yeah, absolutely. So all the data points are category specific, Shakti. So yeah. uh, data points are on supply, demand, capacities, what's online, what's offline, turnarounds, shutdowns, raw materials. Uh, what are the products which are upstream and downstream and how are they affected for your particular category? Financial health of the supplier who you're basically taking into consideration and also a financial simulation because four, four quarters worth of historical data is fantastic but that does not mean that there is a assured performance okay. uh, issue or non-issue because you're looking at a disruptive environment which is not a steady state environment so 
all category numbers go into these calculations. So essentially, it's a category output and not just a supplier risk output. Okay, uh, so one final question from me before we open up the uh, Q, Q, audience Q&A. Um, so how can this supplier risk uh, compliance module, the platform, be used by, say, a manufacturing company uh, with, we say, a banking company? Is there a difference, uh, you know, how folks may use this platform depending on their uh, industry background? Yeah, absolutely, Shakti. So if you can actually request your team to hand back controls to me, I'll start answering that question while they do that. Uh, so Shakti, I think there's a huge difference between one industry to another on how they actually yeah. use the platform, right? And what I mean by how they use the platform is what are the factors which they take into consideration in terms of the partners which Bero uses? And let me just show you a quick sample, uh, right? So I'm going to search for one of the suppliers. So let's say we're looking at uh, somebody in the services space, right? Uh, I'd like to illustrate it with uh, with an example. And let's say for this particular supplier, I want to assess the risk, right? According to me, the way in which you assess the risk of the supplier or look at which are the suppliers we need to be assessed for risk completely changes from one industry to another, right? So for example, somebody in the banking space, you're, you're, you're so regulated, you're so focused on compliance, you're so focused on AML that you would look at a completely different set of risk parameters around financial health, around ethics, around sanctions, uh, around uh, any adverse media appearances, so on and so forth. So the mix of suppliers which would go through that kind of a filter system would be very different for uh, somebody in the opposite end of the spectrum, for example, a manufacturing industry, right? There, the focus could be heavy on sustainability because there's a lot of packaging involved, there's a lot of production involved, there's a lot of processes, chemicals, so on and so forth. So the number of suppliers who need to be assessed, it's going to be very different. The type of risk partners who you're going to work with is very different. The mix of the type of suppliers who you pass through each one of the risk data partners is very different. And the frequency at which you do it will be very different. And the sample which I wanted to show you is how complex our consulting module is, which actually tells you what are the different ways in which you can actually track risk, right? So we've got an entire set of systems which tells you how to look at your uh, data partners, how to look at your suppliers, uh, which ones need to go through, which system of risk monitoring, right? And then a full assessment report is basically generated uh, I, I just clicked on the PDF and I'm hoping it opens up in a few seconds, yeah. which you, you know, which ones went through which rating, so on and so forth, right? So so that's how it's built out. And one of the things which we wanted to announce, uh, Shakti, and I think, I think this is going to be something very interesting for the okay. first 20 users from this particular cohort or, or the people who are attending uh, the webinar today, the audience. Uh, so the first 20 who reach out either through the chat window here or they could email us or any any ways in which they can communicate. The first 20 who do reach out to us, we're going to do a free consulting exercise, which involves number one, a custom one-on-one -on -one session where we, we would advise them on how they can look at their risk and compliance needs, and also how they can actually look at their entire supply base and look at frequency of checks, what kind of checks, who they can probably work with, how they can work with us if they're interested in understanding what that experience looks like. So custom one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions for the first 20 uh, early birds who respond to us is something which we're offering as, as part of today's webinar. Oh, that's uh, that's a surprise. <laughs> uh, we didn't plan for this. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we can open up for audience community. I think it's a nice way to segue into this question. I mean, this person didn't mention the name. It just says no name. I, I, I don't know why. It's uh, What is the cost per supplier for me to avail of this offering are there any setup costs or license fees? Yeah. So I, th I think uh, I mean whoever asked this question can you please uh, you know type in your name it'll, it'll be helpful uh, yeah so basically they're asking what is the what is the cost involved yeah yeah absolutely Shakti uh, so I'll give a direct answer uh, but then before that I think uh, one of the misconceptions is you're working with multiple licenses, you're working with different partners, you've got a managed service, you've got a concierge desk, you've got a platform, it's got to be expensive. The answer is no, right? Uh, pricing is as low as, uh, and this is just a ballpark number, uh, $50 per supplier per year. Uh, it's, it's, it's extremely low because we are leveraging massive economies of scale with our data partners by working with 
multiple suppliers, multiple categories, multiple regions, so on and so forth. So uh, it, like I said, it could be as, as low as $50 per supplier per year, uh, which, which uh, for an assessment. Uh, but then of course, you've got more expensive packages as you keep adding more disruptions, more data partners, it's gonna get expensive. But uh, a simple check for some of the key parameters like financial parameters, ethics, sanctions, so on and so forth, it, it could be very, very small two digit numbers for an entire year's worth of monitoring and tracking. Okay, um, we, we received a few more questions, but then we would just like to run a dipstick survey now. We, we, we just want to know, you know whether this offering makes sense to you. So it's a very simple question. Given a choice, would you implement this solution in your organization? So we'll just flash this Q&A. Uh, it's a simple yes or no. Uh, please do answer. It will really help us to uh, you know, make investments uh, and make the right decisions as far as this offering is concerned. It's a live dipstick that we are doing here. Are you interested in implementing this program in your organization? Yes or no? Uh, please do answer. Like I said, it will help us to uh, make decisions as to how much more to invest in this product, etc. Uh, has it been, what, 10 seconds, 15 seconds now? Maybe another 10 seconds, team, we could run this poll before we take it off. Maybe another five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's continue with your Q and A. Uh, a whale. We got a question from Padmanabhan Krishnamurti. Uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, very insightful. How will the solicitation of financial risk for private suppliers be done? I think Mr. Padmanabhan wants to know uh, the situation about uh, financial risk for private suppliers, privately held suppliers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's 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 a very critical question. I think this is the most important question to address because because if you don't have a segue into an organization, what are you going to show, right? So so the answer to that is we've got different partners, right? You've got DNB, you got Credit Safe. Uh, I, I didn't mention about Creditor Watch, but uh, for example, we've got a relationship with Creditor Watch for certain geographies, and this Creditor Watch is just an example. Uh, for example, if you're looking at Australia, everything works on the principle of ANZ IC codes, right? So Creditor Watch can open a lot of data for uh, Australia, for example. Then you got rapid ratings who can actually go super deep into opening up financial filings, working with suppliers to get their ratings, so on and so forth. Just to give a rough set of numbers, uh, DNB, Credit Safe, they cover as high as 87%, uh, and, and this is a figure which, which I've seen myself, 87% of privately held companies across multiple geographies when you aggregate them together. So most of these data partners do provide information on, on uh, privately held companies. We also have a Vero custom service, right, Chucky, where you could actually ask Vero to do an analysis saying, um, I, I understand the SCR rating, I understand the credit safe common score, but I want to understand um, solvency, efficiency, current ratios, quick to ratios, Z scores, and one of the things which we do is we reach out to these companies by ourselves saying hey uh, we've got a we've got we've got a request to do a financial analysis do you want to get on a call with us understand what the needs are and can you fill out this form and then we basically do the calculations and do the entire uh, analysis which is a deep dive financial risk evaluation and then pass it on to our clients so it's quite simple we've got the right data partners we've got the right reach We've got a custom services space for privately held companies also. But then uh, can there be instances where you don't get anything at all? Absolutely, yes. But the idea is to keep it very low. The idea is to keep it too far in between, probably less than 5% of instances. Okay, uh, this next question is from Joel Tolliver. I think it could be a simple yes or no type of question. Is there a capability to produce a summary page on a particular supplier? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Shakti. The, the answer would be yes, and I think we showed it. Uh, the gentleman might have missed it, but yeah, we do have a uh, so Joe, we do have a consolidated supplier page where it shows the overall risk status and the balanced scorecard for that particular supplier with the individual parameters that you can actually double click and see where are they doing well, where are they not doing well. But the answer would be yes. We we have the ability to do that. Okay. Uh, next question is from 
Timothy Kanu. I mean, he is asked about cyber risk, uh, the proof of concept on the cyber risk. Has your software been proven to be an accurate predictor of risk? Okay, okay. Is this very specific to uh, cyber security or is this a general question, Shakti? Uh, well, he has mentioned cyber risk and then uh, he has posed this question. Okay, maybe absolutely. you I'll answer it. Cyber risk can also generally touch upon the overall predictability of the software. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, Tim, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, so the way it works is, um, is, is, is quite complex. So the way I look at it, uh, Tim, is that all of the data partners, and I'll talk about RPS and cybersecurity too, is anytime somebody flags off an issue, there is always a follow-up, right? And what we mean by a follow-up is a supplier has to actually take a certain set of remedial measures saying that, hey, uh, we alerted saying that the supplier is not doing well on um, there are too many deep dark web mentions about this particular supplier. There is intelligence on an intent to attack companies. And, and when I say attack, I'm only talking about IT security, which, which is a big issue nevertheless, on, on in these particular industries and nations, right? And every time there's an alert, of course, you're gonna reach out to the supplier and you're gonna talk to them. And then you're gonna ask them to check whether each one of these are risks which they face. And they're gonna tell you, yes, you know, some of these have not been updated. Yes, we've seen certain attacks, but we've prevented it. We are fine now. So you can always compare what Bero alerts or our data partners, for example, Office alerts with what the supplier comes back with the response. And you'll find that more often than not, there will be a exact segue on what we actually predicted, right? So just to give you an example, uh, when we were doing a lot of financial health checks on companies during, uh, uh, not during, uh, it's, it's still going on, uh, during the pandemic, we had predicted about a couple of dozen suppliers who we had predicted saying that these raw materials are gonna go into short supply, chemicals, uh, agro commodities, so on and so forth. And these suppliers are going to face cash flow issues. And our clients actually spoke to the suppliers and they found out that yes, six months from then, uh, maybe uh, post uh, March last year, six months into then, so let's say by the month of uh, September, they actually started facing cash flow issues okay. and our clients had to help them out and build collaboration programs. So it's more of you reaching out to your suppliers and finding out whether the issues better was highlighted are really issues and getting them fixed. Oh, cool. Uh, so we have two questions from Rajesh uh, Mehta. Uh, the first question, uh, let me ask the first question, then we can go to the second one. The first one is, uh, do we have manufacturing quality rating in this one? I think okay. it's something to do with ISO standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that there are ISO standards, and I want to be very honest and truthful while answering this question. Uh, so we've got different ratings around ISO, right? And what I mean by ISO is that you've got your ISO 9001s, you've got your ISO 20,000 series, and some of them are very manufacturing based, some of them are environmental based, right? So you've got different ways in which uh, some are waste management based, so on and so forth, right? So you've, you've got those. Uh, for example, if somebody's from the pharma industry, you want to understand GMP, right? Your CGMPs and your GMP. So we've got those. But do we work with one data partner who focuses only on manufacturing organization certifications? I think the answer would be no. But there are certain data points which come in from DNB. There are some data points which come in from, for example, uh, other data partners uh, like uh, like a like a Dow Jones, where we can actually highlight saying that hey, you know what there was a breach in this particular space. Uh, the company's company profile has this particular certification listed, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, do we have one dedicated partner who does this? Uh, no, no, we don't. Okay, um, so second question again from uh, Mr. Mehta. Uh, he's asked about the minimum turnover of organization. I think if I understand his question correctly, um, is there a minimum threshold for suppliers uh, you know who would be included here what if they are too small would they still be included i'm not sure if that is the interpretation of the question he has asked but that, 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 that that's definitely the question so so mm -hmm. turnover is a very common term used in uh, in geographies like uh, india and the uk so the gen okay. um, Rajesh is definitely referring to uh, what do I do with uh, mom and pop shops, right? So yeah. And yeah. somebody might be justifiably working with a lot of them for certain categories, which are, like I said, critical, where they're small for you, but then, uh, you know, you can't be without that supplier because you need that as part of your operations. Anyways, so the direct answer to that is, um, 
we do cover smaller companies too. Um, uh, I don't have an exact mathematical figure to tell you that it's 10 lakhs or whether it's uh, you know $700,000, so on and so forth. So I, I don't have an exact number, but smaller companies are covered too. One of the things which will be interesting is uh, if you want to test it out and if you want to talk with us, you can probably send across the names of a couple of suppliers who you think are very small. Okay. And we can actually test it out and see whether we've got those numbers. I think, I think really checking is the only way to answer this question. But we do cover, uh, like I said, about 140 million plus companies only from DNB and then got various other partners too. Yeah, I mean, he did confirm to us uh, in the chat box that it was indeed the right interpretation. Uh, and then he followed up with another comment here uh, quickly. Uh, there must be some cutoff scores in your platform uh, wherein it decides the high risk, medium risk, and low risk. Yeah. Uh, if I want to customize the scores for identifying high, medium, low risk, is it possible? Yeah, so the platform being the platform is quite standardized, but like like uh, we spoke, Shakti, we have a managed service, right? So we could we could build a platform in a way where, uh, why did I say build it? Uh, we can show it on the platform in a way it's, it's, which is standardized, which is the Bero methodology. But for a particular individual, we can customize it further offline and say that, hey, Bero is calling it high risk, but according to your scale, you're still calling it medium risk. We have corrected it for your benefit, but here are our original numbers, right? Or vice versa. We could do that as a managed service and send it along. But the platform will essentially have what is called as one way of looking at it because it is a it's a mass platform. But yeah, it can be customized though. Okay, uh, so we got another question here. Um, we are asking about uh, regional coverage and data availability. Yeah. For supply. So basically, regional coverage. Uh, you know, what regions do we cover? And again, I think it's a question about data availability, especially in hard to find geographies. Yeah. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so that's I, 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 okay. Raj, sorry, sorry. Uh, with related to this, Mr. Mehta again post another question. He is looking for uh, uh, how much Indian. Okay, is again looking for the coverage of Indian business. Yeah. What is yeah. the yeah. yeah, so I've personally been working on this for a long time, uh, Mr. Mehta. So India's coverage is really, really good. I've probably unlocked ratings for um, hundreds, if not more than that, hundreds of suppliers based in India, Indian suppliers. And I'm not referring to global suppliers who operate in India, Indian suppliers, right? Uh, there's, there's very good coverage, right? But again, to be absolutely honest, when you compare North America, Western Europe, um, you know, some of those geographies on, on, on that side of the hemisphere and you go further east, there will be a reduction in the number of hits. There is no doubt about it, but there is tremendous coverage. There's no doubt about that piece too. And I think Shakti, before Mr. Mehta's question, you spoke about another question on geographies. Every yeah. geography has a certain level of saturation of data points. And one of the things which we provide very transparently before engaging with anybody else is if you work with this data partner, their coverage for this region is 95%. Their coverage for this region is 93%. Their coverage for this region is 89%. So we've got data on each one of our data partners, which they provide to us very transparently. So you'll have a good idea of which suppliers to use, which suppliers not to use with each one of the data partners. So that's something which we are very transparent about. And if something doesn't work, then you obviously, you're not counting those suppliers. You could look at different suppliers. Okay, uh, so during my conversations with some of the procurement leaders, they do mention that uh, sometimes getting data out of, uh, say, country like say China or you know Southeast Asia, some of the countries in South Asia also can be difficult. So, if you take China for example, uh, do we have enough coverage on that? Let's say financial risk of supplies in China. It's a manufacturing powerhouse. There's a lot of companies who do business there. Uh, is there a transparent way for us to uh, predict, say, Chinese uh, suppliers' risk? Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things which I've seen is a big shift, and this is a shift which I've seen over uh, ten years, Shakti. And when I say shift, I don't mean like last year. It's a big, big shift. Uh, maybe it's already happened. Is whenever the manufacturing shift happened about forty years ago, and then when data partners understood where the black boxes are, where data was opaque 
there's always been a strong focus on accentuating and bolstering their data sources across each one of these regions. So if you talk with any of the data partners, and there was an aggregator of aggregators, right? One of the yeah. most common themes which you'll hear is our focus is to make sure that we cover China. Our focus is to make sure we cover South Korea, so on and so forth. So there is there is enough data available which will give you a good idea of um, risk and compliance monitoring for suppliers across most of these uh, geographies. Okay, how about uh, say health and safety, uh, especially say you know when we, we, you are an oil and gas specialist, you know, so health and safety uh, may plays a major role in that sector. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, when you're talking about health and safety, I look at it as Achilles, and Achilles yeah. is very, very strong in that particular industry, oil and gas industry. I think it's common knowledge that that they, they strength lies in that particular industry. And like, 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 I think uh, you have been talking about to Shakti. There's multiple data partners for each data source. There is a barrow custom layer which actually supports wherever there's a data gap, right? There is a live.ai initiative in which you've got hundreds of data partners uh, across uh, benchmarking, across category intelligence, across supplier shortlisting. So we should be able to open many of these data points. And if none of the data points are working, you've got 400 analysts at Vero who do a lot of custom intelligence, who should be able to come in and through experiential understanding of the category with them having the procurement experience, sourcing experience, technical experience, commercial experience, We've got people who might be able to answer that question, if not the data partners themselves. Okay, so we are running out of time, um, maybe about two, three minutes. So one final question, Avail, before we wrap up. This, this is from Anand. Uh, typically, how many suppliers should be included uh, to start off the program? Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's a critical question. And uh, uh, I think this is a good segue to that other point which we mentioned, Shakti. 21st people who basically reach out to you and your team um, will get the one-on-one -on -one free consult uh, in understanding how many suppliers, which data partners, how many through each one of the data partners, frequency, depth of data. So we'll do a free one-on-one -on -one consult to the first 20 early birds in that space. Uh, but anyways, coming here to uh, coming to coming back to that question. So we've seen a we've seen a constant. 85 to 90 percent of suppliers who go through the program which is the base program which is your financial health check ethics check sanctions check tail spend probably not as much but everything else other than the tail spend so you're looking at preferred suppliers strategic suppliers transactional suppliers and critical suppliers so four parts of the pyramid go through the base program and then depending upon your industry depending upon like i said country mix criticality category mix so on and so forth you can pick and choose which ones go through it. So I would look at it this way. If you got about 20,000 20, suppliers, 17,000 would have to go through the first level of diagnostics. And uh, would it be very expensive? I mean, I know it's a very relative term. Uh, would it be a very expensive program if I say run 20,000 suppliers through the system? Uh, not really, Shakti. So it uh, again, it's a very relative term. So how, how critical is uh, supply chain failure? Uh, compared to, uh, for example, being able to do a base pack of fifty dollars per supplier per, per year, right? Per year. So that's okay. That's the way I would look at it. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, we are we are running out of time. I think uh, uh, this 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 should this is the last question. Uh, thank you so much, Vale. Uh, that was a very insightful session on how uh, best to make use of Barrow's uh, supplier risk and complaints platform. Uh, we received, I think, one or two more questions, right, team? Yeah, uh, okay. But unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, we will try and reply by email to all those questions uh, that are not answered in uh, today's session. A big thank you to people uh, who have answered uh, today's uh, poll question too. A um, lot of people have said yes. A lot of people have said no. Thank you so much. It will really help us to, uh, like I said, uh, decide the next course of action as far as investments in this platform is concerned. So that live dipstick really uh, help, will help us uh, in that direction. Uh, this marks uh, the end of our session. A big thank you to all the participants uh, for logging in today. Uh, yes, a couple of them asked whether we, will we be sharing the recording? Yes, we will be sharing the webinar recording link uh, with all our participants soon. Uh, please do reach out to the email address on the screen. Uh, if you have 
any additional questions. Thank you. Have a good day and good evening for those in Asia. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care.